Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Business Spotlight. I'm joined today by Wimsi Supra, who is the founder of Supra Designs. So welcome to the call, Wimsi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's lovely to be here um, and uh, the opportunity to be on the podcast. Thank you. Well, it's lovely to have you. So tell us a little bit about what you do and why you do it, Wimsi. Um, so um, we are an interior architecture and design company um, and uh, called Supra Design Limited. Um, and what we do is we assist luxury residential and hospitality businesses um, across the UK, uh, offering them turnkey design uh, services. OK. And um, so it sounds like quite a broad operation if you're if you're UK wide. Yeah. How did you get into this? What was what was your sort of your journey into ownership of your own business in, in, in this space? Well, my bread and butter is luxury residential and the um, hospitality running a, a sort of a, sorry a designing for hotels, um, and um, that was sort of my initial journey towards uh, doing interior architecture and design. Um, and then I sort of progressed, and I, I saw a gap in the market whilst I was working both of the firms, um, and that was design interior design was always sort of separated to technical like drawings like architecture and then architect and then construction was also separated so there's no like a cohesive um structure towards all of it when you approach a client the client always had to go to, to uh, three or four different people um and I thought you know what interior architecture is the course I did and that's kind of where everything was merged together so I tried it out um and that's where super design bloomed really <laughs> Okay, so that's it's really interesting. You found that gap and you you plugged it according to you know your clients' needs. Essentially, you're aiming at the sort of the the high end luxury sort of hospitality and 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 um, high owner residential. How do you therefore separate yourself apart from your competition in terms of your your marketing and your PR? I would say we offer the turnkey uh, services um, in the sense that we are very knowledgeable in interior design, um, how we spatially define and style the interior. Now, where what, what I mean by that is um, we don't have a niche signature design within the firm. We very much take on board the the client's brief, their lifestyle, what they what they require within the space, and that's very important for us as a as a company to understand the client's needs and requirements and lifestyle, um, because that's how that's when they can live in that space and feel comfortable and homely. Uh, uh, along with that we also include wellness and sustainability coming from a background um where i was born in, uh, born in denmark that's something we were big on and i understand that you know um when you live a sustainable life you live a happy life you you're friendly towards the earth and and you feel healthy mentally and physically so you know living up to that standard and then moving to the uk i felt like it needed ad, needed that ad, um, added sort of a <laughs> A touch of lifestyle within within the home so yeah that's probably what I'd say makes us different wow I mean there's there's a there's a lot in there from you know about sustainability and environmental friendliness and your values etc which is is absolutely fascinating how do you find your clients what's your marketing techniques to find them I would say we have quite a few. We do use a Google um, quite a bit. Google, um, I think it's Google Analytics or Google Ads. <laughs> um, and we also use a lot of social media. I would say platforms such as Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, um, they are one of our huge, huge um, sort of uh, platforms that we promote ourselves. I wouldn't say, I would also say self-branding as well, What I, uh, how I uh, sort of uh, started my company, how um, we we sort of go about attract, sort of working with clients at the moment. That has also always been a, a point that uh, potential clients are always interested in. Um, and then I get a lot of inquiries through that saying, oh, you know, we saw this and this is how you guys are working, you know, would you be interested in assisting us? We also get a lot of word of refer, uh, word of mouth sort of referrals as well uh, by collaborating with different industries such as architects, contractors, um, and and that also brings us a bit of business. So it's it's a really bit of uh, everything, I would say. Okay, no, it's fine. It sounds like you you tell your story though through your work. You know, you're building case studies and things like that. Um, okay, that's really interesting. Now, before we um, we hit record on this, we were talking about um, women in the construction industry, and I explained that as as a business coach, I, I have worked with some. Um, 
you know, and it, it, it is an interesting space. Tell, tell me where your interest comes from and and what your thoughts are on, you know, female directors and the difficulties they might face in the construction industry and in the construction space. It's a really interesting topic because when I started this journey, I, 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 it was five years back, um, and I was quite young. And um, you know, the, the first thing the people would say is, um, "Are you, you know, how old are you?" Like it's with no risk, you know, with no, not considering the fact that you know I'm someone who's sort of trying to start up my own business, um, and and I don't think that that is something that you know a male, you know, a person who would be working in the industry would be asked. And it was very. Free, free frequent um so I think the way to tackle it and handle it it's it's kind of almost like I had to bring up my confidence and um I had to understand everything and and I've always felt like in comparison to a male um sort of contractor or someone in the construction industry the female um sort of contractor anyone working within the in construction industry who were female and I'll say especially in the ethnic minority as well mm-hmm. they always had to work extra harder they always had to prove themselves they knew what they what they were talking about and otherwise they would almost be sort of looked down upon if that makes sense <laughs> so, you've just you've raised three things that you you've raised age you've raised gender you've raised ethnicity yeah. and it sounds like you you've tackled this with with a passion and a determination 100 percent i would i would even say from my own sort of background or like sort of uh, members that i know they they did raise an eye when i said oh yeah i'm going to be working in interior architecture and i'm specifically going to be working with contractors and they were like really (laughs) but i i did it because i knew i was very passionate about it i knew what i was talking about and i think a lot of people whom i've been speaking to within the industry are really I think they they're quite supportive in that saying that you know women in construction there's not a hand there's only a handful of us at the moment who are working in the industry um but in 2023 I'm seeing more and more people especially women who are working within the industry whether they're in the property development or whether they're in the con- construction industry and that's really motivating and I'm really happy to see that because me as a woman I know the struggles and only by coming together and, and working in this industry are we able to sort of prove that no you know it's not just for men but also also for women who can who can sort of work in the in the industry i think there's a really powerful message there for uh, for many people not not just those with ethnicity and gender sort of you know barriers placed in their way but just generally people who come across a challenge and you know i often think there's two ways of of thinking about challenges you either take ownership of them or you use them as an excuse to turn around and walk away in the other direction so this is what you're saying is really inspiring to those people, no matter what the challenge may be, whether it's gender or race or whatever it happens to be, age, to say, look, face it. And if you're really passionate about what you do, you know, push through because that's the ownership option, isn't it? Rather than the, well, I've got an excuse for walking away. It's just too, it's just too difficult right now. What yeah, would you say to that? It's like taking the the red pill, the blue pill that's going out in, in the market. Like you either want to face reality um, yeah. and always a solution to a problem that's my motto in life if you come up with a challenge it's never going to be there's never a solution it's whether you take that action and tackle it and speak to people because there's always going to be people around you who are going to either help you or not help you and it's by having that positive outlook and that's what I take on board any time and every time in life or even in work that you know whenever a challenge comes on there's always always a solution so in terms of the architectural work and the design, same approach. If there's a problem, we find the solution. We do. I think I'm a very solution orientated person. So when I come into a space and I'm seeing a challenge, I'm like, All right, what can we do about it? How can we resolve it? Um, whether that's through design, whether that's through sort of spatially arranging it, or whether that's, you know, even in terms of businesses, how we can sort of promote it to the customers, um, how we can enhance it, add value. That's all the things that we look at. And it works all the time. If you come at, come at it from that perspective and you do your research and you know what you're talking about, there's always like a, re- a solution hmm. and Ramsey would you say you now you've, you've got a team around you do you do you look for the same sort of qualities in the people that you bring into your organization is that very much part of your selection criteria or, or do you hope to develop them in people when they arrive how, how does your how, how does your passion and your focus extend to building your team and building your business 
I think it really de- it's sort of a uh, it's it's around the, the the fact that I've already worked in these industries before. So whether that's as an interior designer or where, whether that's as a work with people similar to that industry. So currently the, the sort of team I have at the moment is a brand manager. We've got uh, an interior architect. We've got an architect. And then we've got another interior sort of intern architect, sort of interior architect in on board as well. Um, and what I look for when I'm doing hiring process, because I've got two step hiring process within within the sort of interviewing stage. Yeah. And that how they communicate confidence. I always believe that if you're if you can come across confidence, regardless of how how not in non experienced or experienced you are, you can deliver anything. And I think the rest is all about just adapting and learning. So I'm very much someone who's always willing to push my team if they want to, you know, excel in something, and they always have opportunities to work in, you know, different levels of work. If someone's not comfortable, that's fine. You want to stay there and and work within your comfort zone. But if someone wants to excel and they want to try things, I always uh, sort of encourage them. And that's, you know, that's how I am. So I encourage that with them. Fabulous. Well, let let me ask you one final question. Where next for your business? Where do you want to take Super Design? I would say we we're currently working nationally, which is this year's goal, and it's working really well. We've got clients in, you know, Midlands, Scotland recently too. We went to a really nice sort of um uh, a um, networking event, um, and also in London. So we, we, there's lots of exciting talks within the sort of B two B and B two C market, um, and. On top of that, we've also sort of um, exhibited in London Excel uh, last year, which meant that we've had some international clients who have been interested in our services. So hopefully by next, you know, two to three years, we we are looking to go international too. Absolutely fantastic. Mamsi, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this morning. Um, you know, thank you for your time. No worries. Take care.